Welcome to Plymouth, a coastal city rich in maritime history and bordered by the unspoilt wilds of Dartmoor. These days, a new, youthful Plymouth is emerging and it's attracting those with younger, more cosmopolitan tastes. People like teachers Mark and Hannah Hughes. They want to relocate from West Sussex to bring up their two young daughters by the sea. We want to move to Plymouth because we need the benefits of a city uh, also with access to the country and, and beaches. We want something that's very raw, like the landscape around us, but we also want a bit of a social touchstone for the children, being somewhere that they can shop or cinema or something a bit more civilised. So, we know why our couple want to live in Plymouth, but what kind of property are they after? We tend to get drawn toward the older style of property for just the cornices and the fireplaces and the strip floorboards, which would be, which would be ace. We need somewhere where people can come and visit us. And um, be comfy. So really, we, we do need a fourth bedroom. I've always known, in my heart of hearts, that Hannah was the one for me. <laughs> and I've always, I, I really believe that that's the same with houses. If you walk through a front door, and it makes your shoulders drop, and it makes your heart rate slow, and what, just feel relaxed what that thing will be is, is, I'm not sure. Well, Phil and I like a challenge. Time to get started. Hi, now, here you're pretty fired up about this. Very excited. Looking forward to it. We've been waiting a long time to get the right house. It has to have has four to bedrooms. Have. And it has to come under 150. We could stretch a little bit over 150 if it was our dream home. If we, we... we could or you could? <laughs> the, budget is, uh, the budget is 150,000 pounds. Okay, a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, we'll see what we can do. So, our task this week is to find Mark and Hannah a four-bedroom period house with a garden for £150,000. It may be a tough one. Plymouth was once a grand Victorian city, but was badly bombed in the war. Period properties are now harder to find, so sell at a premium. Our first property is in Manamede, a popular area of Plymouth for families and one of Mark and Hannah's favourites. They thought they couldn't afford to buy here, but we found them this Victorian terraced house. It's got four bedrooms, a large garden and is on the market for £139,950. What's that? Lovely front door. Lovely front door. Big hallway. Really big hallway. And come this way, straight into the living room. What do you make of this? Oh, what a gorgeous fireplace. Yes. I'm so <laughs> glad. <laughs> Eyes have gone oh. straight oh. to the fireplace. I'm, That's I'm beautiful. so glad you that said that. That is so gorgeous. Is it marble? I don't think it is. I think it's stone. The Victorians were incredibly keen on marble. They'd have put it everywhere given half a chance. Right. But obviously it was expensive. Yeah. And there were these very clever artists who could do amazing things with feathers and sponges and make it look like marble. And if you have a look, do you see here? The marble doesn't go round. And I oh, think right. that's where the paint effect has rubbed off. The breakfast room itself is lovely, mm -hmm. with it being open plan, with yeah. the kitchen, really mm -hmm. nice. You can do your cooking and have your friends sitting, yeah. waiting to be served. I think the cladding, which was hugely fashionable in the 70s, is very claustrophobic. It is. And you need to completely redo this kitchen. But if you don't move the gas and the water, it could cost you as little as £1,200 for a whole new kitchen. Looking around the house, are you happy to take on the level of decoration that would be beneficial? Yeah, yeah because it's all fairly superficial. There's nothing that really worries me or uh, looks like it's going to be end of free weekends for a long time. As I said to you before, it's about feel and it's a lovely feel to this house. Excellent. Good start. Yeah. We're scoring points. You're doing well. All sounding positive, but Phil's got a concern. We are worried about this busy road. Mark and Hannah have got two small kids and there's no immediate parking here. It would be possible to dig out the garden and create a driveway. It would cost around £2,000, but you would need planning permission. The council will have to come along and lower the kerb here. And the planners would be very interested to know that you could enter and exit in a forward gear. I think they'd better practice their 10-point turns. It has the feel. I don't know what it is, but it really does have the feel, don't you think? Yeah, and it I has do. that lovely front door. Garden. That is so beautiful, that view. I never thought we'd get that in Plymouth Town Centre. I like this house. Traffic really isn't that bad, is it? It's a potential, isn't it? It really is a major potential. So, off to a strong start. But with concerns about the main road, for our second property, we're taking Mark and Hannah somewhere much quieter. 
We're off to Peveril, a sleepy residential area in the north of Plymouth. This 1930s semi-detached house has three bedrooms and a basement room. It's on the market for £139,950. Here we are. Come in, Hannah. Right. What was going through your mind as we were coming up to the door? I love the stained glass panels in the front door and also across the top of the windows here. It's a little bit smaller, but it's on at exactly the same money. Right. So you're really paying for the the You're the paying for the position. Yeah. Now this is the second of the two reception rooms. The house at the back is quite near. You can see into their reception room or their bedroom, mm. and they can probably see in here. It but... has its bonuses in other people's <laughs> bedrooms, but it's the feel of the house. It's different to the other one. So the vibe isn't here? The vibe isn't here for me yet. I mean, I'd have to see the whole... It's on a much more... No, 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 don't make that face, because that's important. It's not a negative thing. You shouldn't worry about saying to me, this house isn't right. Right. Either I've got to find where it is, or we've got to leave. OK. Because of the lovely bayed window, it does restrict positioning of furniture. Yes. Although it does create so much light mm. in the room. It's a, a nice-sized room and it's so quiet. What's in your mind? It hasn't impressed me as much. It's, it's not as much of the dream home I'm looking for. It's a nice house, but it's just not the one. Okay. Satisfactory. <laughs> <laughs> Said by a true teacher. <laughs> so, a great house, but still missing that special something for Mark and Hannah. For our third house, we're off to Stoke, another part of Plymouth that's attractive to families with loads of parks and leisure facilities. This Victorian end of terrace house has four bedrooms, is packed full of period features and is priced at £154,000. The kitchen's been recently fitted. There's a stunning master bedroom and all the other bedrooms are generous. Will this be the one to score top marks? Everyone in? Look at your face! <laughs> oh, my It's got a nice feel. It has to be that this cannot be in our budget. Um, actually, it's only just above your budget. It's on at £154,000. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. How does it compare with other things that you've seen? It really is a totally different class. I'm quite shocked. I'm, I'm a little bit stunned and maybe a little bit tearful. <laughs> no, honestly, honestly. This would be something that we would aspire to in after Wouldn't this we all? house. <laughs> yes, exactly. But this, 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 is, this to us would be the next house yeah. after the house we're buying at the moment. Yeah. Look at that. Well, I mean, you've got everything else in the kitchen sink up there, haven't you? <laughs> Having a chandelier hanging from it really shows what a ceiling rose is there for because right. it all yeah. is designed to come down into that point. And the room goes on. Wow. Now, the distance from that bay window to the end of the house there is just under 50 foot. <laughs> <laughs> that can't be true. It's, it's 49 foot six. 60 foot. OK. OK. Reality check. We think this is perfect in virtually every way. It doesn't have a garden, so that's the trade-off. Whether it's one they'll be happy to make, we'll find out. I can't go on with you like this. I've got to talk to you about the downside. I'm starting to feel like a really dodgy estate agent. <laughs> <laughs> it has no garden. Right. At it all. has parking for two cars out there. Yeah. But whatever garden there was has been sacrificed for the parking. That is a downside. It's a major downside. It is, a major it is downside. why an amazing huge house like this is on the market at £154,000. No house, or very, very rarely, does a house come miraculously cheap. Every price is for a reason. Yeah. Could we manage without a garden? No, seriously. <laughs> now, look. Yes. This is the most beautiful house I've ever seen. I've ever <laughs> been in. The only thing that's stopping me is the dog. Dog. The dog. What because, about the girls? Because if there was a check, you'd sign it now, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> the house's original features have helped seduce Mark and Hannah. Period details always add value to a property, but restoring them doesn't have to cost the earth. 
If you've got an incomplete cornice, don't be tempted by cheap replicas. Specialists can make a mould of your design from as little as £50 a metre. Sanding original floors is a dirty job, but not a costly one. Replace any missing boards with reclaimed originals from £11 a square metre. Reclamation yards are a great source for reasonable period replacements. You can pick up an original fireplace from as little as £100.